Thanks to loop prevention and the IBGP split horizon rule, among other factors, we know that we need to come up with some scalability solutions for IBGP, and one of those solutions is route reflectors. In this nugget, we'll take a look at the basics involving these important structures. I often say it, don't I? Some of the most complex topics that we need to solve are done with the simplest of configurations, and we're going to see that with our route reflector configuration. We end up configuring the route reflector, and these clients that we're going to have, the R4, R5, and R6 route reflector clients, they're completely unaware of the configuration. We don't do anything by way of configuration on those devices. They don't know their route reflector clients. Everything is done on the route reflector, including the 32-bit identifier, which is the route reflector cluster ID. So this device and these clients are going to be part of what we call a route reflector cluster, and there's a 32-bit cluster ID, and the best practice is to have that pulled from the router ID of that BGP speaker, so we don't have anything to do with this important identifier either. We could manually set it, but Cisco actually recommends we don't do that. So how does this work? How does a route reflector solve our problems? Well, let's take a look at a prefix advertisement that comes from a route reflector client. What the route reflector will do is it will reflect that to its route reflector client peers and then it also sends it out to its non-route reflector peers. So notice, this device right here sends an update. It is going to go to all of our other devices. Pretty cool. And notice we do not have a full mesh, not even close, of peerings in this case. Now what about if the update comes in from a non-route reflector client? Well, what'll happen is the route reflector will send that update to all of its route reflector clients, but then it's going to follow the rules of IBGP, and in this case, it will not send an update via IBGP to the other non-route reflector client. So what would we do to solve this? Well, we would clearly need a peering between the R1 device and the R2 device, and that is something I did not set up intentionally so that we could see and verify that this is working the way it's supposed to. So let's confirm this with our configuration of the R3 device as a route reflector. Notice that I configured everything else for us so I wouldn't bore you with that configuration, and we have peerings on the R3 route reflector to the five other devices in our topology. So watch how easy this is to do. I'm going to go into BGP, and I'm simply going to say neighbor, and we have the 4444 four, 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 neighbor, and that's going to be a route reflector client. And then we're going to do this same thing for the quad five neighbor, route reflector client. And then finally, one more time, we're going to do this for the R6 device. So there we go, and we're going to say route reflector client. All right, I'm going to end my configuration right now, and it's time for us to do one of two tests. The first test we'll do is the scenario I described, where a route reflector client sends an update. Remember, the route reflector should reflect this to the client peers, and it should also forward it to the non-client peers. So with this prefix update originated on R4, we would expect to see it everywhere. We'll check for it on the R2 device, and we'll check for it on the R6 device, and if it's in those two places, we'll feel confident enough that this worked as described. So in the background, I have created our prefix advertisement on the route reflector client, 
and we've sent that into that this topology, let's go over to one of the other route reflector clients, the R6 device, and check for the prefix as we said we would. I'll do a show IP BGP and look at that. There is the prefix. It is on this device purely as a result of the route reflector because IBGP never would have taken in this prefix and then passed it along to another IBGP peer. Now, somewhat more interesting is our test at R2. Remember, this is not a route reflector client in this topology. It's just another IBGP peer. So if I do my show IP BGP on this device, look at that. The route reflector behavior did work just as we said. This device does learn of the prefix because the route reflector is going to take the update from its client and it is going to propagate that to its other clients and also its non-client peers. But we're not done testing this. What about an update that comes in from a non-client? What did we say? If it comes in from the non-client, it should be reflected out to the clients, but then normal IBGP split horizon would kick in for this other non-client. So when we inspect right here, we shouldn't see this prefix if things are working as advertised. So we begin on the R6 device. This is a route reflector client, so we would expect to see this prefix update that came in from a non-route reflector client. Let me do our show IP BGP once again and look at the chains. Sure enough, we are now getting another prefix, this one from that non-route reflector client. What about the R2 device? Well, if we go over to the R2 device and we do our show IP BGP command, we can do this till the cows come home. What a weird expression. But we can do it again and again and again. It's never going to show up because it is being stopped by the IBGP split horizon rule as we would expect. This is one of those nuggets where if this is brand new material to you, you might want to watch it a couple of times. There is a lot to take in here. I realize that. Route reflectors and their rules are really well versed for me, so I've... I just kind of know instinctively how this works. For this to become muscle memory or instinctive for you, it is something you might want to watch a couple of times. And don't hesitate to do what I did. Practice building a little six router topology like we did. In fact, you don't need six. You could easily do this with five or even be more creative and do it with fewer routers. But you get the idea. It's definitely something that you want to play with and practice with so that this becomes part of your BGP vocabulary. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.